Hello, this is Blowing Rock Art and History Museum Programs and Outreach Director Willard Watson. I was able to travel to the home studio of artist Tony Griffin, the classically trained painter who lives and works in North Carolina. Griffin's work has evolved from a deep-rooted understanding and appreciation of academic approaches to a more personal and direct interpretation of his experiences and surroundings. He is a perceptual painter, and his work is based on observation and response. While Griffin remains faithful to the principles and ideals of his classical training, his work has developed into a looser, more confident voice, a testament not only to his skill, but to his personal vision. To quote Tony, everything begins with something observed and felt. Observation is not an end, but rather a beginning point for an emotional, formal, or imaginative statement of exploration. I believe in the responsive energy that comes from painting directly in front of the motif the give and take between painter and subject, painter and painting, end quote. I, I start, I usually start painting early in the morning. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm an early riser. So often the bulk of my work is done by, you know, one o'clock or uh, now the days are starting, especially during the short days, you know, one or two o'clock, lunch and a little break and the sun starts going down. Mm -hmm. And I like daylight. I, I like this natural light. I love painting in natural light. I love the early morning. I, I get up early, so I generally come out here, you know, pretty early when the sun's up and paint most of the day. I've never been one to work much at night. A day usually does me in. Um, but if the days are longer in the summer, you know, I've got time. It's almost like I can get two days in one. Work morning till noon, take a break, a nap, lunch, and then get in another day almost. You might produce more work in the summer months than in the winter, huh? Often. You know, summer months is when I do my outdoor painting, What you know, what I do. I do a lot of uh, landscapes in the summer, but I really enjoy all of it. Mm -hmm. uh, I miss the studio often. Uh, I've, I've got, I find the older I get, the more I like being in the studio where I have I don't have bugs and I don't have wind and rain and yeah you have your your conditions all your paints and brushes are at hand my music mm -hmm. yeah, my coffee machine how long have you been making art well drawing was my first love really um, I, I loved drawing long before I really knew what art was. I just liked drawing and, you know, and then when I began studying, that's what they had me start with, drawing. Mm -hmm. So for a long time, I was just encouraged to draw. Long before I ever picked up a paintbrush, and that was eventually encouraged, you know, to learn to draw first. So was there a distinct time when you remember, you know, that you decided, I want to be an artist, I want to pursue art? Yeah, there, there was. Um, there were a few people in my life who were, who were artists, Ben Long being one of them. You know, I saw, I witnessed it and just decided that that's what I wanted to be. I wanted to do what they did. Now, at Brom, currently, you have a show that you're doing with Ben. And um, in the description for the show, it said that you're actually Ben's apprentice. Ben is my brother-in-law. He married my sister when I was very, very young. And um, I uh, became, back then, in those days, uh, the way they worked uh, uh, was, they called it apprenticeship, where you just worked with the artist. Um, I think I was doing it before I was aware that I was doing it because I, I was just working alongside him without really knowing what it was called. I was just trying to learn. 
you know, later I realized that that is what I was doing, it was apprenticeship. Now, what type of work were you doing as his apprentice? When you say working alongside an artist, what? Drawing, uh, preparing materials, uh, drawing from the models that he would have, um, grinding paints, uh, preparing papers, uh, making panels to paint on, making canvases, uh, because they were, uh, Ben and many of the people that I was around then uh, were uh, into the craft uh, as well, you know, preparing the material, making the material, uh, which, which all fed me. I, I, I enjoyed that. Mm -hmm. It sort of contributed to the love of, of the craft, uh, which um, I later learned was very valuable. Oh, yeah. I mean, just to get such a strong foundation like that. Yeah, and knowing how the materials are made, how to stretch canvases, how to, how to grind colors, the, um, that proved to be very valuable, even though I don't always do that, because uh, it's not necessary really in today's world, because you can buy good uh, pigment, good uh, manufactured paints and uh, canvases. And, Mm -hmm. But if you're making them yourself, you have more control over how they turn out. You know, you, you can make them the way you want them. Now, did, um, where did your apprenticeship kind of take place? Was that in Charlotte? No. Ben and my sister took me to Italy when I was a young boy. To Florence, Italy. Uh, for many reasons. Um, one was to study art. So we lived in Florence, Italy, and many people went there to study, you know, traditional painting. You know, it was even better than I knew at the time. Mm -hmm. uh, I was a boy and I was just doing, you know, what I did, but I went to a regular high school not an art high school, American School of Florence, and basically studied art after school uh, with Ben and people that he was working with. And um, I just did what they did, drawing from models, preparing materials. It was mostly drawing because uh, he encouraged me to focus on drawing. He always stressed to me the importance of drawing, so I really focused on that. I was just doing what I was told. Um, I still painted a little bit, but uh, mostly drawing. What do you find yourself doing the most of? Is it do you still draw a lot, or are you mainly are you mainly painting? Like what you're doing? I do all of it. Uh, you know, I, I, drawing eventually became a passion. It, it's like breathing. You know, it's just something I have to do. I, I, I draw every day. I, I have sketchbooks and uh, it's kind of like practicing an instrument. Uh, and I was always encouraged to do that and I think eventually it just sank in and became what first became like homework I didn't really want to do, became a passion. Mm -hmm. Most things for me, even paintings, essentially began with a drawing whether it's drawing with a brush or a pencil. Uh, it's the way I start a painting. Uh, it's the way I uh, uh, sort of internalize ideas. A lot of my ideas come from what I, things I see. Uh, maybe just a moment or maybe something as simple as the way the light hits something. Or I never know. Uh, sometimes you know, inspiration can come from any number of things. It can, for me, it can come from just the process of working. I often start out working, not really knowing what I want to do, but I just start moving. Uh, sometimes I have a preconceived idea, and I'll do studies for it and pursue it, and inevitably it becomes something other than what I set out to do. So, you know, the inspiration, I, I'd say the, just the process of working is brings about a lot of the inspiration. I mean, I, I take a pristine, pretty canvas and uh, 
mess it up, make a few marks on it, and then it's fair game. You know, it's just wide open sometimes. I see that in our in your studio here, it's mainly paintings, but there are some drawings too. So do you have some work that is on, is just it's finished as a drawing or? I do. Um, I have a lot of work around me at all times and uh, it's hard to know. So I, I guess a painting is finished when I have nothing else to do to it. Uh, but that can change. I have some paintings around that I've been working on for a few years and I somehow still manage to find things to do to them. I like to always have several things going at once. Um, it keeps me engaged. You know, I, I think about it at night. So I, I try to always have more than one going. Some days I'm in the mood to, that's why I try to keep several going at the same time. Some days I'm just not in the mood to work on one, but I'm in the mood to work on the other. Uh, I guess ultimately it's all the same to me, whether it's a landscape, a figure, or a portrait, it's, it's still, it's, it's all painting. What captures your eye about a subject that you're like, I want to paint that? Hmm. Well, it could be any number of things, and light always plays into everything, really. Um, a lot of my paintings are, are about light and atmosphere, space. So again, it could be anything that attracts me. It may be something as simple as the light hitting a tree, or, or it may be a story that I've read, or a song that I've heard. Um, often, it's about art history. Uh, I feel like I'm always in dialogue with art history, uh, with the Renaissance, or uh, with paintings that I love, artists that I love. So I, I feel like in, in some ways I'm, I'm always in dialogue with that. I mean, there's, here's an example. That's the famous winged victory. Yeah, I, I'm real interested in atmospheric painting. Uh, I, I'm, I'm always interested in, in, in depicting space in my paintings. So when you're uh, working with a living model, um, how yes. long do you get them to pose for you? Or do you ever work off photographs? Or do you prefer to have someone in person? I prefer working from life. Uh, that can be hard sometimes. But generally two, hour, um, um, two hours at a time is generally about the most models can take. Um, and I've, I, I enjoy working from life. I enjoy the process of, of, of looking. Perception-based, you know, painting is always interests me. Now, um, you said you're in conversation a lot with art history. Is there, are there certain artists, um, you know, classical masters or that you just really try to emulate or who's... Well, well I, don't, I don't necessarily try to emulate them. I just try to be inspired by them. There was a time when I did. I think when you're younger, you tend to sort of emulate other people, uh, but ideally, as an artist, you, you sort of, you know, become comfortable in your own skin and, and just uh, uh, do what you feel. Uh, but a lot of inspiration comes from that, for, for me, from, from the old masters. Or scanning all centuries. I mean, uh, you know, one day it may be Morandi and I may do some still lives or, or another day it may be something from the Renaissance, a subject matter. Or even ancient art. Um, there's an example: the winged victory. Mm -hmm. um, and so then, when we came in, you were playing. Uh, you had some classical music going. 
Now, do you usually work to music, and are there certain types of music that you really like working to? Uh, I, I love working to music, uh, and and it varies. I'm all it may be jazz, classical, rock and roll. It sort of depends on the mood I'm in. I usually need, I like something to get me going. It's not always Chopin that gets me going. But, but uh, yeah, I, I always have music playing. I have a lot of CDs, and I, I never know. Uh, some, t some days I'm in a Neil Young mood, or a Bruce Coburn, or Mozart. Or... So do you have a favorite type of paint to work with? I do. I, I, I like um, many of them. My newest one is um, Rublev. It's a handmade paint that I really like because it has more pigment in it. But, you know, any professional grade will do. Windsor Newton, uh, Rembrandt, uh, Graham, any of the professional grade. And do you work ex like exclusively with oils? Well, uh, yeah, I may do some watercolor stuff, but primarily oil. And uh, how about your brushes? Do you have a particular type of brush? I have a few favorites, but I find most of them useful. Um, one of my favorites are Princeton Filberts. I'm sorry, Silver Grand Prix Filberts. That's a current favorite. It depends on what I'm doing too, what I'm painting. Mm-hmm. Some things require a little house brush, house painting brush. <laughs> well, especially the scale of the work you're working, you're doing as well. Right? Yeah, well, especially when I get bigger like that. Mm -hmm. Is there a preferred scale that you like to work on? You... Well, I'm finding more and more I like larger scale work. Uh, I did not always. That was not always the case. Uh, but I like both. I, I've always enjoyed really tiny paintings and, uh, to, to large paintings, but I am starting to enjoy large paintings more. They, they, they have more of an impact, I'm finding. But then again, I was always attracted to little intimate paintings too, so I do both. So, um, can you tell us some about the work that you've got up at Braum right now? Yeah, that, uh, that is sort of decades of drawings. Um, and drawing is very dear to me, so uh, that, that show scans decades of drawings, of figurative drawings, portraits and figures, which is something that's always been dear to me. I love drawing and I love drawing the figure, portraits. I do a lot of portraits just for myself, uh, just for the pleasure of, of drawing. So that's really what that show is. Uh, it's called Drawing from Life, and it's specifically uh, mostly drawings that are done from life, from the figure or from uh, directly with the model, which is something Ben and I both do a lot of. And I still do that. I still do a lot of drawing for life. And so some of the subjects that are in there, I mean, it, it spans a large uh, portion of your career. Now, are they, you know, some of them close friends or is it just like a model that happened to uh, you hire? Both, both. Um, personally, I often get familiar with a model and, and maybe become friends, maybe not, but in many cases it's people that I uh, develop a working relationship with and do 
work, do a series of stuff. You know, you get comfortable, I get comfortable with a person and do a big a body of work with them, uh, especially people that are sympathetic to, to, to the art spirit, you know, to, to, to the intentions. Mm -hmm. And then I'm just noticing here, so in the corner behind you, there's a painting of a woman in a blue dress on a chair. And then it looks like the same person on a larger painting over here. Yes, a, yeah, good eye. Yes, that was a, a model that I worked with for years, five, six years. And I, I did a, a lot of paintings and drawings of her. And there's some in, 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 blowing, in the Blowing Off show. So it, it's just funny to me you know, being a, a portraitist, you could be like, oh, you know, I, I really just, I love your body. I, I got to paint you, you know? Right. And it's not a weird thing to say to somebody. <laughs> it's like, oh, oh, but I'm not a painter. I just... Well, it's often, <laughs> I mean, it's a, it's a weird thing because it's not, you know, you don't, it's not something you come across every day. I had a figure drawing group for 28 years and it was, uh, you know, a lot of people thought it was weird. It's just not something you see every day. It's not like someone going to their office to, or going to the bank to work. Uh, rather than going to the bank to work, I go to my studio to draw, you know, women with no clothes on. <laughs> but now it's become fairly common you know, there's, I've noticed that there are a lot of professional models that have sites, you know, where you can hire them. So it's not as unusual as it used to be in, in our area. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think, you know, just the surface of the paint becomes a narrative in itself. You know, so there, there, there are so many forms of narratives. There's a story, there may be a story, or there may be, there's the narrative of paint, um, which, which interests me a lot, just the surface of the paint, textures and whatnot. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, your brush strokes, what you chose to do where, and the texture it adds there. Um, that's one thing I really enjoy about oils as a medium to look at you know it's just yeah. like wow they really globbed it on in that one part or oh, yeah it's a wonderful thing. thing because you know at first i used to be for a long time i was fearful of paint i was fearful of making mistakes and then eventually you know i, I realized that you can change it you can paint over it you can sand it you can scrape it and even in doing so you get these interesting surfaces so mistakes can sometimes add to a painting and, and they're unpredictable, the, the, the results. Uh, so I, I, I've become to trust that a little bit. Mm -hmm. And I, I, can, I can go to bed at night resting okay now if I did not have a good day, if I made a lot of mistakes. Because I know tomorrow, or whenever it's dry, I can sand it, I can scrape it, and suddenly it becomes something else and I don't always know what, and that's exciting to me. Mm -hmm. um, you know, for me, the important thing is just, just trusting yourself, you know, just do what you feel. It took me a long time to get there. I, I thought there were more rules and regulations, and um, in the end, it doesn't really matter. You know, you ask about technique. In the end, it doesn't really matter uh, if, it, if you're able to get down what you want. Mm -hmm. uh, certain techniques may enable you to get that down better. I, I don't know. Well, I think like just the, the kind of the literacy of the image yeah. right, and what works um, composition-wise. And uh, it's just thinking about, I mean, this portrait right here in front of me um, of the guy with his, you know, it looks like a farmer, the suspenders and the green shirt yeah. on and everything. And what is just, what really drew my eye is that there's a light switch on the side, yeah. you know, and it's just yeah. like that little kind of like tangent. It's yeah. just a really nice, 
accessory, but where it's at. And where it is. It's There's often a reason for things, you know. Um, and sometimes they're intentional, sometimes they're not. Uh, I mean, that, that particular one is in some ways a portrait of the room as well. Because that, uh, that room meant a lot to me, that space. I did a whole series of paintings of the empty room. Mm. So are there uh, like any techniques that you're working on refining right now? Uh, not really. I, I don't really think about technique much. Um, what technique there is, is at this point kind of not very conscious. I mean, you got thick paint or you got thin paint, uh, but uh, I, I have found it doesn't really matter. You know, just anything that'll hold your, your image or your idea. I used to be more concerned about technique and studied techniques, you know, Rembrandt, Vermeer. But I don't think about that as much anymore. You know, the process, you never know. Sometimes paintings finish themselves suddenly. <laughs> <laughs>